Hello once again, my friends. I welcome you to another video. We're going to talk about a little bit of movie history today. I've got something amazing to show you. When it comes to the television series, of course, you guys have followed my channel. You know Star Trek has my heart as the best series ever. But there are a lot of really good series that have come and gone through the years. Even before Star Trek. Um, things that come to mind before Star Trek is I'm a real lover of the Three Stooges. And I don't know if that would be or constitute a series, but it was still on the film. Um, let's see. A lot of my favorite shows around the Star Trek time involving police officers. I grew up with Adam-12, so I'm very fond of Adam-12. Um, incidentally, I should probably give a reference to Chips, because I also grew up with Chips. Adam-12 was a little before my time, but the reruns I always made sure to catch. Um, and Adam-12 was just about my favorite TV show that was police-oriented growing up. Well, what I want to show you guys today is something that really, really revolutionized television. What I have in this box is the DVD box set for the complete series of NYPD Blue. Now, that show broke so many grounds. Um, I could just sit here and ramble on about the, the series itself, but instead, why don't we take it over to the desk where there's more light, and I'll show you this wonderful series. All right, let's look in this box, open up this wonderful series, you guys can see. The only disappointment that I have with this set is I did a little bit of research and I was looking for like a, a special packaging the entire series kind of thing because this series really deserved it. You know, like something like The Sopranos has. So when I ordered this, I had looked for different um, versions of the complete series box set, and I had found a couple. Well, actually, I just found one, but I found it um, on sale from a couple sources, but the price was just astronomical. It was totally ridiculous. I found this on eBay. NYPD Blue is an American drama series that aired from 1993 to 2005 and starred Dennis Franz, David Caruso, and Jimmy Schmitz. Also Kim Delaney, Charlotte Ross, Sharon Lawrence, and Amy Brenneman. Um, it's just a wonderful show. With the writers of Stephen Bochco, David Milch, Bill Clark, Nicholas Wooten, Matt Olmsted, and Stephen Gagan, Ian Birdman. The final episode date was March 1st of 2005. I was hoping that this would be in that special packaging, but instead, this is the, what, this is what I got, it's the, um, all the seasons, and they're in the individual kind of um, packaging. See the way the first three, let's see, it looks like the first four, we got season one, two, three, and four, and you're in that kind of like a special box. Um, I don't know why they didn't do the same thing for the rest. The final season, and from season, looks like season five on, has just the, um, the regular cases. But enough of that. Let's open it up and show you this wonderful series. Let's see. Now, I'm not going to use my bow knife to, <laughs> to open this up. Alright, let's kind of... Nice and gently. Again, this is one of my favorite series. This is second only to Star Trek as my favorite series ever. And another one of the police dramas that I loved as a kid, to this day I love, is the Columbo series. And incidentally, Stephen Bochco was one of the writers on Columbo, if you guys didn't know that. There are a lot of police type shows through the years. Let's just get rid of all that plastic. But like I said, this one is by far the best. So many shows have stolen from this series. 
it, great shows. I'm not putting them down, but think about like The Sopranos, the way the um, the format of the shooting, the episodes, the camera angles, um, the shaking of the camera. That all started from NYPD Blue. Um, even to this day, um, recently Sons of Anarchy, great series, um, very 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 reminiscent to the format of NYPD Blue, even to the um, the Mayans with the camera angles and the shaking of the camera, everything. A lot of series owe their, their success to NYPD Blue. So let's open up. Of course, the season one had Detective Kelly, uh, David Caruso, and Andy, Andy Sipowitz, Dennis Franz, so let's open the packaging. I like to keep everything in the packaging if I can. Yeah, I know, that's just, I've always been that way. <laughs> All right. All right, let's get some of these wonderful discs out to show you guys. Just take them all out. Okay, we're going to focus on season one, one and two. So these are episodes one through four and five through eight. You guys can see we've got Sipowitz and John Kelly on the cover. And on the back, it shows you the episode guide. We got the pilot. Episode one Detective John Kelly has his hands full on the work front. His partner's drinking problem and continual harassment of gangster Alphonse Giadella is about to get them both in over their heads with the mob. On the personal front, his wife wants a divorce. You guys may or may not know the series. Andy Sipowitz really had a lot of drinking problems. Um, and he was quite the alcoholic. Episode 2 is 4B or not 4B. Lieutenant Fancy and Detective Kelly are warned to stop pursuing the mob even as Andy Sipowitz lies in the hospital with numerous gunshot wounds. Back at Kelly's ex-wife's apartment building, an angry young man starts carrying a gun for protection. Actually, I think that guy was on uh, the series Friends. I think, I don't really know that series. I'll put a picture of him up for you guys. <clears throat> Episode three is Brown Appetit. After discovering the hotel where Giadella is being held, Sipwitz gets his revenge with the help of Pet Bulldog, the hotel's thankful chef. Meanwhile, Officer Janice Lacasse receives a visit from her guilt-ridden father. And they have the dates. That, that aired on 10-5-93, so that was in October of 93. Episode 4, True Confessions. Kelly quits moonlighting as a bodyguard after discovering his millionaire employer is a wife beater. Later, Kelly speaks as a at a tenant meeting, explaining the dangers of carrying a gun for protection. Unfortunately, his talk has little impact on tenant and 4B. Again, that's the guy from uh, Friends. I mean, I don't know why you would do this. The guy was going around on the subway, almost inviting trouble, and he had a gun in the briefcase. I, I just don't know why you would do that. Disc 2. Uh, believe, I am not anti-gun, by the way, but that no responsible gun owner would do, carry around a gun in a suitcase or his briefcase. Going on to disc two, we got episode five, Emission completed. Martinez discovers a two superintendent of his brother's apartment building is a cop who beats and robs tenants who fall behind on their rent. While Kelly helps Martinez gather evidence, a fellow detective begins plaguing the 15th with elaborate pranks. Episode 6 is Personal Foul. Kelly is forced to arrest a close friend after a, light, a, bas a fight on a basketball court leaves another friend dead. Meanwhile, Sipowitz's suspicions are aroused while investigating a drive-by shooting in which the wife was killed, but the husband survives. That was from October 26th of 1993. Episode 7 Sipowitz, the stranger's son, Andy Jr., shows up and announces his engagement. Andy Sr. decides to look into the bride's background. Lou, the werewolf, shows up at the station house, begging to be locked up for the next, before the next full moon. That was November 2nd of 93. And episode 8 is the last episode on these discs. 
Lieutenant Fancy hires Donna Abandado, a well-endowed civilian, empl civ uh, civilian employee, well-endowed is, well, she is a very attractive woman, to work in the precinct. Safe Street program. Kelly, Sipowitz, and Martinez pick up a man wanted for questioning in the shooting death of a cab driver. And this is 1993. Let's take a look at the discs. So you can see there are two discs. And like I said, again, this series deserves like special packaging with all these extras and deleted scenes. I would just love that. We got disc one. And we have Andy Sipowitz on it. Um, this is 20th Century Fox. We move over to disc two with the second four episodes. And get the discs so, it, uh, so it's upright. We have Detective Kelly. And Detective Kelly, David Caruso would leave the series after just one season. Um, luckily for him, he would go on to another hit show uh, I think it was CIS Miami at the time, but I don't know. I don't really get into that show. But he only wanted to be on the show one season. So that's the first DVD case. The second one, we got disc five, disc six, with episodes 17 to 20 and 21 and 22. And you can see they have more of a cast on the cover now. They've got Detective Kelly. They've got Andy Sipowitz. Martinez, Lieutenant Fancy. Disc five, the first air date uh, was at March 1st, 1994. Black men can jump. Sipowitz is furious when he suspects a private investigator is giving false hope to a man whose daughter has been missing for two and a half years. The father of a 13 year old boy who wants to, who was shot down in the street starts his own search for after the police suspect escapes. Moving on to second one, Zeppo Marks Brothers. When a martial witness, uh, excuse me, a material witness to a drug hit turns up dead, Sipowitz and Kelly's investigation lead them to two brothers who have also planned to hit a hit on Kelly's ex-wife, Laura. Sipowitz must perform uniform detail in a dress uniform way too small. That was funny. When uh, Sipowitz um, buttons up his uniform, he's told he better face it the other way because a projectile could be a deadly weapon. <laughs> Let's see. Detective searching land landfill for a body of a dead girl find a body of a millionaire instead. While Kelly interviews a wife of the deceased, Sipowitz does come investigating on his own after Andy Jr. is arrested for selling cocaine. Good times, good time Charlie, and that aired Let's see, May 3rd of 1994. A man finds himself in way over his head when his wife finds out, finds out about his numerous girlfriends. The Colsey is promoted to the intelligence division and Sipwitz has a rough night after accompanying Sylvia to her father's birthday party. So moving on to disc six, we got Guns N' Roses, which aired on 5-10-94. Even as uh, the Colsey confesses to shooting Angelo Marino and his driver. Martinez is forced to shoot an irate man who points a gun at Metavoy while they're stuck in traffic. Realizing he needs professional help, Sipowitz finally attends an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And I think his sponsor ends up being that guy from uh, Young Frankenstein, if, um, if memory serves. Moving on to episode 22, and that was May 17th of 1994. Sipowitz and Kelly investigate the stabbing death of a priest whose body was found in a park frequented by male prostitutes. While purchasing a used car for Annie Jr., Sipowitz uncovers information concerning a young girl who's been missing for over two years. And that was um, his son ends up buying a Cadillac. Uh, they're at a public auction. And I think it was 20, 2200 or 2300, somewhere around there where Annie Jr. gets a Cadillac. And we got additional bonus features, so I'm liking this. 58 minutes of the making of season one documentary, that's gonna be fun. Love on NYPD Blue, the cast blotter featurettes. Script to screen comparisons and cast and crew bios. This is gonna be really fun. I love it, I was hoping it would be extras. So let's take a look inside. And I apologize in advance, guys. There's 12 seasons on this. 
and I want to show this series the respect it deserves, and I got to tell you about each episode. This is disc five, and we got Detective Martinez on the, uh, the front. And uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm drawing a blank. I can't remember her name. Um, I think it just said it. Yeah, I, I can't remember her name. But that's the second packaging. All right, move on to the third package from season one. So we got disc three, disc four, we got episodes nine to 12 and 13, 16. And again, you can see author Fancy, um, Martinez, and I'm drawing a blank on her name. So disc three, episode nine, Ice Follies, and that was in November 23rd of 1993. When Martinez's brother dies from a drug overdose, their father sets out to kill the drug dealer responsible. Back at the precinct, Don Abentado invites Detective Menavoy out for an evening of ice skating, and that's when they kind of get to be an item. On to episode 10, Oscar Meyer Wiener. <laughs> and that ear dated on, um, let's see, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day of 1993. Ignoring Kelly's advice, Lacalsi reveals that she's being blackmailed by the mob. Lacalsi, that was that was her name. She reveals that she's being blackmailed by the mob. Kelly and Sipowitz investigate the brutal robbery murder of a wealthy family and work with a porn dealer in hopes of retrieving a stolen Oscar statuette. <clears throat> Episode 11. From here, look how they spell here, from here to eternity. December 14th of 1993. As the holidays approach, Kelly and Sipowitz get an early gift in the form of a hot tip while investigating the kidnapping of a young girl. Sipowitz secretly comes to Fancy's aid when the lieutenant is accused of mismanaging the department. And Sipowitz backs him up. And Fancy, all he does is kind of get all mad in his face saying how he doesn't owe him. Um, but they kind of, they calm down together and they get more civil. And that's when Fancy acknowledges what Andy did for him. And then wishes Andy a Merry Christmas because Andy at the time is dressed as Santa Claus. So episode 12 is up on the roof, air date January 4th of 1994. While Martinez investigates a series of robberies involving a fake ATM machine, Kelly's current case yields evidence that links Lucalsi to the mob. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Fancy tries to extend his custody of a young boy whose mother is a drug is in a drug rehabilitation program. And again, this is New York City. One of the things that really disappointed me about this series, I wish I didn't know this, um, it's not filmed in New York. They, it's filmed at in some studio in California. Although they did say that they went from New, back to New York from time to time to take shots of everything. But I was hoping that this was a New York series, but it's not. It was filmed in California. Moving on to disc four. Episode 13, Abendado Abandoned. And this was from January 11th of 1994. Donna's joy over Menavoy leaving his wife is short-lived when he has a change of heart. Kelly and Sipowitz track down a man who's killed the husband of a good friend of Kelly's, while an angry wife strikes back after suffering spousal abuse from her husband. Episode 14 is Jumping Jack Fleshman, and that was from January 18th of 1994. When a woman who was raped refuses to press charges for fear of her husband will say she brought it on herself, Lucalsi acts as a decoy in an attempt to trap the prime suspect. Meanwhile, Kelly, Sipowitz, and Metavoy track down a cross-dressing male killer. Episode 15, Steroid Roy. Here date, February 8th of 1994. When Kelly and Sipowitz respond to a suicide call, they find the body of a police informant who had come to the precinct earlier in that day shouting that he was sleeping with the police contact. Lucalsi suspects that her partner is taking drugs. And the last episode on this is episode 16, I think. Is this the last David Caruso episode? February 15th of 1994. 
Sipowis has to defuse an explosive situation when a disabled Vietnam vet who is mugged decides to take matters into his own hands. Kelly steps in to help the girlfriend, a terminally ill millionaire, pay off an ex-lover who is blackmailing her. I'll show you guys the discs. And that whole thing with um, that he was helping, that, that's why they kind of railroaded him out of the precinct. They gave him, I think it was radio dispatch duty. You can see season one, episode nine to 12. And this is episode four, uh, excuse me, disc four, season one, episodes one, uh, 13 to 16. And offhand, I, I, I don't really, I don't remember the names of those people. I apologize. And is that all of season one? If that is, this is the David Caruso era in NYPD Blue. Fuss ending it. <clears throat> so this had David Caruso, and I like Detective Kelly, because he was like that cool level-headed guy when Annie would like fly off the handle all the time. You can see the back of the box has the making of a season one documentary, Love on NYPD Blue. Um, episode commentaries hopefully we have some deleted scenes to check out too in this groundbreaking series that broke all the rules and triggered what might be the biggest mutiny in tv history when some station affiliates across the country refused to carry the show some viewers also complained but the majority loved what was being touted as tv's first r-rated series over the course of its run nypd blue garnered amazing 86 Emmys, Emmy Award nominations, and 21 wins. So if you missed all the excitement back then, don't miss it now. Take a ride back to 1993 and join the cops of the 15th Squad in the first season of NYPD Blue. And again, this series is absolutely amazing. If you got, if you never, uh, you owe it to yourself. You can go on eBay <clears throat> and get the series one, season one, excuse me. Um, for relatively inexpensive get the DVDs if you like it move on and I'll go through the entire series for you right now So that was season one the David Caruso error All right, where can I put this put all right, let's do this. We'll put this back at the end as we go through Okay, and I was kind of bummed when David Caruso left the series because I like detective Kelly but we got Jimmy Smits that comes on, and I really like Jimmy Smits. Um, he ended up being fantastic for the show. He, incidentally, he was on another one of my favorite shows, Sons of Anarchy, and he just, this guy just adds class to the uh, to any episode that he's in. All right, let's open this up. So it's kind of funny when Andy, still raw over the loss of Detective Kelly, um, Detective Bobby Simone, that's Jimmy Smith's character, he comes in and they're in the locker room and he looks at Andy and he says, how you doing? So Andy gets all upset <laughs> and he goes to, to the, um, Lieutenant Fancy and he says, this isn't going to work, I can't work for that guy. He's like, how, would, how you doing and all that stuff. And, funny because Fancy goes, you don't want to work with him because he said, how you doing? <laughs> but he ends up being really close. Probably, it seems like he was closer to Bobby Simone than any other of the partners he had throughout the series. I could be wrong, but that's the impression that I got. All right, let's look at, this is season two, and this is the first disc. You can see we got Bobby Simone on the cover, and we have Detective Sipowitz. This is disc one, episodes one to four, with disc two, episodes five to eight. <clears throat> disc one, episode one, Trials and Tribulations. <laughs> Incidentally, that was a great Deep Space Nine episode where they brought footage of the original Enterprise, Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk with the Tribbles, and. We learn about Worf and the Klingon. Uh, all right, that's a whole separate video, I'm sorry. Air date October 11th of 1994. 
While Kelly testifies on behalf of Janice McCalsey concerning her involvement with the mobster Angelo Marino, Sipowitz tries to convince a battered wife not to drop the assault charges she files against her abusive husband. I love it when those jerks that beat their wives get their asses kicked by Sipowitz, because they deserve it. Okay, moving on to For Whom the Skell Rolls, October 18th of 1994. Even after the jury reaches a verdict on the Lucalsi case, internal affairs continues to search for the pages Kelly ripped out of Angel Marino's ledger. Later that evening, Sipowitz surprises Sylvia by proposing to her during dinner. Episode 3 is Cop Suey. I love the names they come up with. Sipowitz is outraged when an abusive wife he spoke to earlier is found dead. While he interviews the dead woman's husband, Kelly teams up with a Chinese detective in a homicide investigation. Um, an off-duty cop in Chinatown. Episode 4, Dead and Gone. When a fellow detective dies in bed, a prostitute Sipowitz moves the body to save the detective's family from embarrassment. That was funny because um, he's face down and he's got no pants on. So Sipowitz goes in there, finds him that way, and he decides to put him in a car to make it more honorable and he's got to dress him up and <laughs> it's, it's pretty I mean it's not funny the guy was dead but it's funny how Sipowitz has to get him dressed and especially the look on Metavoy's face when Metavoy realizes that he's dead in a car and he's an accessory meanwhile Kelly makes a shocking decision after realizing internal affairs is not going to drop the investigation so let's see Simone says and this was November 15th of 1994. Detective Bobby Simone's first day starts with a bang. Detective Lesniak's boyfriend shows up drunk and carrying a gun. Later, he and Sipowitz search for clues after the mobster's son is killed. And Lesniak talks to a woman who fears her husband is sexually abusing their daughter. There's so many different kind of issues on this show that it's just... The writing on this show is just a masterpiece. Episode 6, The Final Adjustment, air date November 22nd of 94. Sip Sipowitz and Simone investigate a chiropractor after his wife's body is found inside a building that is being renovated. Later, Simone is approached by a distraught woman who found a gun inside her 11-year-old son's dresser drawer. Episode 7, Double Abandado on 11-29-94. After a man is shot while jogging in a park, a number of suspects increases when it becomes known that he's infected a number of women with HIV. Mayhem ensues when Donna Abendado's sister moves into her apartment and then hits on Metavoy. In episode eight, you bet your life. And that was December 6th of 94, while Simone and Sipowitz questioned two young men about the charred remains of a pregnant woman Martinez investigates a pawn shop robbery. Later, Sipowitz is shocked when Dan Breen, Alcoholics Anonymous sponsor, is beaten by his mentally unbalanced son. That was a really sad episode. We have disc one of season two, and we have Detective Martinez on the cover. And disc two, Season 2 is Lieutenant Fancy. Alright, looking at the next one. You can see... Oh, I just said her name too and I can't think of her name offhand. Sylvia. I'm sorry, Sylvia. She's actually the DA that gets close to Andy and they get involved. So this one has episodes 9 to 12 and 13 to 16. Disc 3. Don We Now Are Gay Apparel, air date, January 3rd of 1995. Metavoy goes undercover to nab a gypsy who has tricked out one of his old neighbors out of her money. When Simone and Sipowitz investigate the murder at a gay bar, ignoring Sipowitz's warning, Dan Bree's visitor sent up to suspecting he was stopped. He has stopped taking his medication. Episode 10, In the Butt Bob, <laughs> January 10th of 1995. Simone locks horns with a task force while investigating a murder which they suspect was committed by a serial killer. Meanwhile, Fancy smells a trap when a stoolie who tipped him off a major crime years ago shows up again with a new tip. 
Episode 11 is Vishi Vashi Vini on January 17th of 95. As Simone continues to investigate the Weber murder case, Fancy sets a trap for the man who tr tried to entrap him. Haver Hill from internal investigations, Lesniak sets her own trap to catch the person threatening a woman and demanding cash. And episode 12, Large Mouth, large mouth Bass. Sipowitz and Simone are called to a scene of a murder when a female victim was stabbed 55 times. Meanwhile, Lesniak and Menavoy help a group of single and lonely female uh, females being targeted by a slick con artist. And now we move on to disc four. Episode 13, Travels with Andy. And that was from February 14th of 1995, Valentine's Day. As Sipowitz begins to worry about the huge Greek Orthodox wedding ceremony Sylvia is planning, one in which he must wear a crown of white flowers, he and Simone had uh, head upstate to question a man about a triple homicide and robbery that occurred in New York City. Episode 14, A Murder with Teeth in It, which air dated February 21st of 95. Donna decides to end her relationship with Menavoy after it becomes apparent he is spying on her. Simone also decides to end his relationship with Benita after he suspects she leaked information to another reporter concerning the case they had discussed in private. Yeah, that wasn't cool on her part. Episode 15 is Bombs Away, and that was from February 28th of 1995. When Sipowitz and Simone collide with another car, the detectives are shocked to hear cries for help coming from the car's trunk. A man whose daughter was murdered decides to take justice into his own hands. And episode 16, Uncommon, uh, Un-American Graffiti. Now it's from March 14th of 1995. Simone and Sipowitz try to track down two Italian men who chased and killed a young Hispanic graffiti tagger in a neighborhood in Little Italy. Despite their breakup, Menavoy helps one of Donna's old boyfriends when his car is vandalized. <coughs> we got disc three, and Bobby Simone is on there. And we have disc four, and we have, um, who else? Andy Sipowitz. All right. Let's see, this is the last case for season two. And we got Bobby Simone, Detective Martinez, we got Sylvia, and we have Lieutenant Arthur Fancy. And this has episodes 17 and 20, 21 and 22, uh, 222. So disc five, episode 17 is Dirty Socks, and that was from March 21st of 1995. Simone fears a witness's attraction to him would jeopardize the murder case he is working on. Meanwhile, Sipowitz receives permission to aid the murder investigation at a candy store in Brooklyn, where he worked as a child. And again, these descriptions are very broad. Um, you can go and judge for yourself and watch the series. There's a lot more than just a few descriptive sentences to these episodes. Uh, moving on to episode 18, Innuendo, and that's from April 4th of 95. The detectives search for an unbalanced grad student who went on a shooting spree after being forcibly evicted from his apartment. Back at the precinct, Fancy steps in when his brother, a police officer, gets into a dispute with his commanding officer. Episode 19 is Boxer Rebellion, and that's from May 2nd of 95. Simone and Sipowitz team up with an undercover cop, Diane Russell, to trap a man who is suspected of starting a fire that claimed the firefighter's life. Disaster ensues after Sipowitz convinces a couple to testify against two men who robbed their store. And Diane Russell actually goes to the 15th squad later in the series. She gets a relationship with Bobby Simone. Episode 20 is The Bookie and the Kooky Cookie. Air date, May 9th of 95. Sipowitz tricks a, suspect, a suspected murderer's mother into giving up her son. Simone is faced with a difficult dilemma, when his only witness in a murder case agrees to testify only if she and Simone become lovers after the trial is over. Okay, moving on to disc six, and this is the last disc of the season. Episode 21, The Bank Dick, and that was from May 16th of 95. Russell and Sipowitz track down a man who attacks women after they use the ATM machine. 
Squad's gay male receptionist asks Simone for help after he and his lover are attacked. Sipowitz tells Simone that Russell is having a drinking problem. Um, I think the um, the receptionist, the gay, his name is John. I mean, he's like the nicest guy on the show. Moving on to episode 22 is ADA Sipowitz. Year date, May 23rd of 95. Russell is horrified when a drinking problem resurfaces and she and Simone work together on a robbery homicide. A big day finally arrives and Simone, as the best man and Andy Jr. in attendance, Sipowitz and Sylvia walk down the aisle. And we have more additional bonus. 57 minute season two, a season of change documentary, Wedding Bell Blues and the music of Mike Post featurettes. Script to screen comparison. So that's gonna be amazingly fun to watch. That was season two. And let's see. Take a ride with New York's finest. After the critical acclaim and award-winning success of NYPD Blue's first season, fans were stunned when it was announced that David Caruso would be leaving the show early in his second season. So my mistake, I had said he left at season one. He was still around a little bit in season two. Fans and critics alike held their breath, wondering if the show's talented ensemble cast could survive his departure. But they need not be worried. Emmy, the award-winning Jimmy Smith, stepped in a newly vacant spot, quickly making his own. Now journey back to 1994 and to join the cops in the 15 squad to be welcoming Detective Bobby Simone. And you can see the extra season of change, wedding bell blues, the music of the Mike Post featurettes episode commentaries, script to screen, and more. And that is season two. All right, let's move on to season three. And now we've got the badge. The one, the box set that I had seen had the badge, kind of like a, a black box, but it was like a case to put all the DVDs in, and that's what I was hoping I would get with this see the, the badge NYPD Blue season three. Let's open this up. And there's only two discs in season three. Incidentally, I may, I, uh, I referenced the different shows that this show inspired and Sons of Anarchy, I've actually done an unboxing of the series of that episode, of uh, that series, because that's an amazing series as well. And I also have the box set of The Sopranos. If I get a good, um, if I get interest from this, I'll show the, uh, the Sopranos box set, because that's another great series. <laughs> Try to get these out. Okay, so. Let's start season three. So we've got discs one and two. We've got Bobby Simone on the cover. And this is disc one, episodes one to six. And disc two is episodes seven to 12. All right, disc one, let's see. Oh wow, look, side A and side B. I don't think I've ever seen a DVD. At least I've never had a DVD that does that. All right, first episode aired on October 24th of 95. Episode 1, ER. Teleplay by David Mills. Story by David Milch, David Mills. Directed by, Sim all right. Simone and Sipowitz are shocked to discover that a suspect in a robbery in which Martinez was shot is actually a corrections officer at Rikers Island. Episode two is Torah, 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 and that premiered on Halloween in 1995. Simone and Sipowitz search for the killer of a young girl, and later Sipowitz and Metavoy go undercover as rabbis to find valuable stolen Torah. Episode three is One Big Happy Family, and that's from November 7th of 95. With Russell acting as a decoy, the detectives lay a trap, the serial rapist who appears to be murdering his victims so they can't testify against him. Episode 4, Heaven Can Wait, from November 14th of 95. The combination of the murder of two children, um, Costas' pregnancy and 
Russell's drinking problem begin to take their toll on Sipowitz. And then you flip it over to side B. Again, I've never had a DVD that does that. We got episode five, Dirty Laundry, and that's from November 21st of 95. The detectives look into a homicide at a laundromat and the filing of a false police report, while Lesniak must deal with rumors that she's gay. And again, this is back in 95, so all these topics were real, you know, taboo. Okay, episode six, Kurt Russell, air date November 26th of 95. The detective, the detectives investigate after an East Indian woman is found murdered inside her locked car. Russell is angered when Simone is overprotective of her son on a job. Going over to disc two, Episode 7 is Aging Bull. <laughs> Again, you've got to love these, these titles. And that's December 12th of 95. Simone tries to help an old friend suffering from Alzheimer's disease and has to deal with the FBI when they take over a kidnapping investigation. That's kind of a depressing series or episode. It, it seems the older I get, the more depressing those things kind of tend to be to me. Episode 6 is Cold Heaters. And that's from December 19th of 95. Simone gets a break in an armored car heist, and then later tries to help a man who went to help his son and ended up firing his gun in self-defense. Again, I'm, I'm not anti-gun. I'm a gun advocate, but there are just... No responsible gun owner takes out a gun and just starts shooting in the street. Nobody would do that. At least nobody that I know would do that. Episode 9, Sorry, Wrong Suspect. And that's from January 9th of 1996. Sipowitz and Simone investigate an apparent murder of a Chinatown teenager and Martinez confronts Lesniak about her sexuality. I don't remember if that's because um, Detective Martinez kind of wanted to go out with her and she was shooting him down. And I'm not really 100% sure of that. Episode 10 is The Backboard Jungle from January 16th of 96. The detectives investigate multiple homicides at a basketball game which is organized as a memorial to the young black teenager who died in police custody. Going over to side two, we got episode 11, Burning Love. And that's from January 30th of 96. Simone and Sipwitz investigate when the charred remains of a woman are found inside an abandoned house. Metavoy volunteers for a dangerous overtime assignment. And the season finale is episode 12, These Old Bones, from February 6th of 96. When Russell deals with the shooting death of her father, Sipowitz and Metavoy try to dig up evidence in an eight-year-old murder case. I'm sorry, did I say series, uh, season finale? I'm not. This is just the end of disc one, or container one. You can see they actually flip over. Like I said, I, I've never seen ones that do that. Is this a new thing or? Well, guys, I don't get out much. <laughs> you can see both of the uh, discs. All right, now this is container two from season three. And disc three has episodes 13 to 18, and disc four has 19 to 22. And again, we got Sipowitz on the job. Episode 13, a tush full of dollars. Again, these, these titles are amazing. February 13th of 96. Simone and Sipowitz investigate the murder of a crime boss's son. When Russell tries to convince a man to present evidence that could prove his stepfather's murder, uh, stepfather murdered his mother. Episode 14, The Nutty Confessor from February 20th of 96. A suspect in a brutal murder of a young woman tries to convince Simone and Sipowitz she's, uh, he's insane. Martinez and Lesniak decide to consummate their relationship. So episode 15, we got Head Case. This is February 27th of 96. While Simone and Sipowitz search for a killer who decapitated a college professor, a smitten Martinez helps an ex-porn star who's receiving threatening phone calls. Episode 16, Girl Talk. Um, the detectives investigate after children are assaulted and then thrown off building rooftops. Yes, this, this series is not for kids. Um, 
And this was on network television in the 90s, but this is really, really raw stuff. This kind of broke the ground. Um, Sipowitz explains to Annie Jr. what it means to be a good cop, and that's from March 19th of 96. Again, this dealt with so many issues and groundbreaking things. I mean, they said, I mean, and, and to this day, the boundaries are pushed beyond limits. I mean, watching the Mayans, they drop F-bombs all the time now. <laughs> it's TV. It just, it seems that there's no more limitations. Well, that that's cable too, but it, the FX network, it just seems now that things have gotten so lax with uh, the violence and the, the swearing and the, the situations. But anyway, let's get on. This is disc three. This is side B. Again, we're going to flip the discs over. Episode 17, Holly and the Blowfish. It's from March 26th of 96. Uh, Metavoy and Martinez investigate the murder of a Spanish priest who practiced, who practiced white magic and Sipowitz voices concern when Simone uses a law-breaking informant. In episode 18, We Was Robbed from April 2nd of 96. Simone and Sipowitz pose as armed robbers to protect their cover. Metavoy's sexual remarks concerning Martinez and a beautiful woman anger Lesniak. Going over to disc four, side A, we've got episode 19, Auntie Maimed, April 30th of 96. A young man offers to confess to a murder of his aunt. Donna considers a job offer at Apple Computer and Sipowitz's wife goes into labor. Going on to episode 20, A Death in the Family is from May 7th of 96. The whole squad is shocked and saddened when a passerby killed in a bar shootout turns out to be Andy Jr. Catastrophe that sends Sipowitz back to the bottle. This is a really sad episode. Um, Andy, they're, they're going to check the, um, the victim and Andy goes to the desk and the nurse gives him all the stuff and Andy says, well, this is Andy Jr.'s things. As soon as he walks in to see the body, um, Bobby Simone lets him know that that is indeed his son. It's really sad. On disc four, side B, flipping an oval, we got episode 21, closing time, from May 14th of 96. As Simone searches for Andy Jr.'s killers, Sipowitz's out of control drinking gets him kicked out of both his home and the precinct. And this one is the season finale. Episode 22, He's Not Guilty, He's My Brother, from May 21st of 96. While Simone Russell and Sipowitz investigate the fatal shooting of an auto um, paint and body shop, Menavoy and Martinez and Lesniak search for the murder of two drug users. And we have additional features, Life in the 15th Precinct, Father and Son, and Women of NYPD Blue. So that is season I don't know, I like it better when they have extra discs and they put the pictures or the photos on the discs. All right. So, season three. The 16th Precinct. Welcome back. The gripping third season of the critically acclaimed and award-winning show delves deeper into the daily and often violent events in New York City's 15th Squad. Life is good as Detective Sipowitz and his wife prepare for the birth of their first baby, but his partner Bobby Simone is also beginning a new romance with fellow detective Diane Russell, yet things are far from perfect. As of Sipowitz and Russell each continue their private struggle with the bottle, they find themselves sharing another unexpected bond, the tragic death of a family member. And again, we have the special featurettes that I read to you. Women of NYPD Blue, Father and Son Featurette, Life in the 15 Precinct, and Selected Episode Commentaries. Okay, let's move on to Season 4. And again, we have The Shield on the cover. And this series was using words that, you know, a-hole and things like that, where you just couldn't say things like that on television. Like I said, watching the Mayans the other night, I mean, they're dropping F-bombs all over the place. So they they really, um, I understand The Sopranos has a lot of F-bombs, but um, not when it was on television. Instead of the M-F-er, whenever Tony said that, it was blood sucker. If you guys ever seen it on TV, it was always blood sucker instead of the M-F-er. 
but with the Mayans, it's just like one F-bomb after another. I'm not too crazy about that series, only because I really miss the suns, and my favorite parts of the Mayans are when the suns are on it. We've seen Chibs a couple of times, and um, yeah, that's when I like it best, so when the suns are on. Let's see, is this discs one and two? Yep. And we've got Bobby Simone on a cover. Disc one is episodes one to six, and discs two is seven to twelve. And we're going to do, I guess, this A, B side throughout the rest of the series. Okay, so disc one, side A, we've got Moby Greg, <laughs> and that's from October 15th of 96. Sipowitz admits he froze during the shootout because he was afraid of dying, and Russell seems equally afraid to accept Simone's marriage proposal. Episode two, Thick STU, and that's from October 22nd of 96. Simone and Sipowitz grow suspicious while investigating a missing person's case in which a man reported his infant daughter was snatched. Martinez runs for a squad delegate. This one was very disturbing. Um, they find the baby, the, the weights, and it, it was the... It, this is... I, I'd rather not talk about that episode. Episode 3, Yes, We Have No Cannolis, <laughs> from October 29th of 96. Simone investigates a murder in his apartment building and also reopens a robbery case after he and Sipowitz begin to suspect an innocent man was convicted of a crime. We got episode four, Where's, Where's Swaldo? Um, from November 12th of 96. Menavoy and Martinez investigate a shooting in a bodega, which they suspect is just a front. Sipowitz and Simone try to track down a killer of two victims gunned down in a car. Now we move on to side B, and we got episode five, Where'd the Van Go? <laughs> Get it? Van Go? Again, a little play on words. And that's from November 19th of 96. Martinez's first delegate case involves a policeman married to two women. Simone and Sipwis discover a robbery man may have staged, uh, may have been staged, and Russell's sobriety is put to the test. Episode 6, Yes Sir, That's My Baby, from November 26 of 1996. A new detective, Jill Kirkland Dahl, uh, Kirkendall, helps a man being threatened for refusing to marry his old girlfriend, and Simone and Sipowitz investigate a murder of an ex-fireman turned chauffeur. Now, this uh, detective, Jill Kirkendall, she was supposed to be for a few episodes, and I ended up writing her into the show. Um, let's go to side to disc two, side A. We got episode seven, Ted and Carrie's Bogus Adventure from December 10th of 1996. The detectives investigate when a mother claims her daughter was raped, Sipowitz fears the worst when a man who was on who was previously committed to Bellevue shows up at the station house. Episode eight, Unembraceable You from December 10th of 96. And Lieutenant Fancy tries to help Mokeo after he's arrested for heroin possession. Simone and Sipowitz search for the shooter who gunned down a young man in the East Village. And episode 9 is Corksmanship from December 17th of 96. Russell realizes she was drugged while working undercover. And all the detectives run up against strangely uncooperative neighbors while investigating two different murders. We have episode 10, My Wild Irish Nose, <laughs> from January 7th of 97. Metavoy and Martinez raid an apartment only to find drug addicts bidding on a dead man's belongings. Simone arrests the man who drugged Russell. I wouldn't want to be that guy when Simone gets his hands on him. So on to disc two. Episode 11, Alice Doesn't Fit Here Anymore, from January 14th of 1997. Simone and Sipowitz track down 1.4 million in stolen jewels. Martinez, Menavoy, and Russell investigate after one of their own brutally, their own is brutally killed during an attempted rape. And this one, let's see, episode 12, Upstairs, Downstairs, from January 21st of 97. Simone and Sipowitz catch heat 
from other cops in a precinct when they look into the testimony offered by an off-duty police officer involved in a double homicide. All right, let's look at container two. We got Andy Sipowitz on the cover, and this is disc three with episodes 13 to 18, disc four with 19 to 22. And you gotta love this guy. All right, disc three, side A, is episode 13, and it's Tom and Jerry. And again, look how it's spelled, G-E-R-I, from January 28th of 97. Russell and Kirkendall look into a case of autoerotic asphyxiation when Simone and Sipwitz investigate a homicide involving two warrior label coalitions. Episode 14 is a Remington original. February 11th of 1997. Two detectives at the precinct are kept busy investigating two homicide cases where two bodies were dumped, one in a salvage yard and the other in a garbage-filled vacant lot. On to episode 15, um, Tail Lights, Last Gleaming. February 18th of 1997, Fancy has a solution to help straighten out the racist cop who pulled him and his wife over for a burnt-out tail light. And Sipowitz has strange dreams about Andy Jr. Episode 16, What a Dump. And as from February 25th of 1997, Simone and Sipowitz respond to the scene where garbage men found a partially clad body of a woman. Well, Menavoy, Martinez, and Russell handle a gang related shooting. And now we're flipping it over to side B for episode 17, A Gut Wrenching Experience. I'm sorry, A Wrenching Experience. And that's from March 15th of 1997. Kirkendall and Russell investigate a babysitter who may have shaken an infant to death. While the other detectives investigate the shooting of a gang member and the car repair shop owner. It's always disturbing when they have kids and babies, especially babies. Episode 18 is I Love Lucy from March 22nd. Kirkendall tries to help an old friend kick her drug habit, and Sipowitz and Simone investigate when Angela, a drag queen, is murdered. We go to disc four, side A. Episode 19 is Bad Rap, from March 29th of 1997. Menavoy is shocked to learn that Abby wants him to donate his sperm so her girlfriend can become pregnant. And Simone and Sipowitz investigate a shooting involved in a rap, involving a rap star. Episode 20 is Emission Impossible. Again, the play on words is great. From April 6th of 1912, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of the Titanic, I'm sorry. April 6th of 1997. Russell investigates when a woman claims her husband raped her 12 year old daughter. Metavoy gets ready to give Abby what she wants. So, flipping it over, we got side B to episode 21, and it's Is Paris Burning? from April 13th of 97. Simone's secret involvement with the FBI probe gets him in trouble with internal affairs and a drunken detective, Gotelli, hijacks and then crashes a city bus. Episode 22, a draining experience from April 20th of 97. Simone's undercover work with the FBI threatened his own career and Sipwitz and Russell investigate a case in which a murder victim has drain cleaner poured down her throat. Man, that's some sick stuff. And we got the additional features through the lens, the look of blue. I'm going to look forward to that and in the new. All right, let's see if we have a picture. You can see the discs. Let's see what's in the background. It looks like the Brooklyn Bridge. So that's pretty cool. Again, I'd rather have them have more discs with, the, with the, uh, the labels on them. But I can understand from a cost-effective point of view. All right. Season of the award-winning show, the fourth season in action in New York City's 15th precinct is the heroic as ever. While Lieutenant Fancy continues as precinct commander, Detective Sipowitz, although still a bit rough around the edges, is mellowed with the birth of his son. Detectives Bobby Simone and Diane Russell take the next step in their relationship. Martinez becomes the squad's delegate, and Greg Metavoy considers becoming a surrogate father. But one thing that hasn't changed is the squad's determination to make sure the bad guys get their day in court. 
and also an attempt to maintain a touch of normalcy to their personal lives, even as they investigate cases that often put them directly in a line of fire. You can see Metavoy, Simone Sipowitz, and the selective commentaries through the lens, the look of blue, and in with the new. So that was season four. So moving on to season five, we can see we've got Simone and Sipowitz on the cover. And then we've got Detective Russell, the, uh, Lieutenant Fancy, which, Detective Martinez and Detective Metavoy. All right, let's, let's open this one up. All right. Ooh, I like it when they do this. This is cool, so I'd rather have it like this. So, we have disc one. We have disc two, again with Bobby Simone. And we've got disc three. Disc four. We've got disc five. And we've got disc number six. Let me get this out without. Uh... All right. So let's uh, read you guys. They got the episodes written on the inside of the label. So disc one, this buds for you. That's from September 30th of 1997. Sipowitz and Simone deal with the aftermath of the joy of Joey Salvo homicide. A drugged out pimp goes on a killing spree. All's Wells That Ends Well is from October 7th of 97. A corrections officer may have inadvertently shot and killed an innocent bystander during a robbery. The detectives set up a surveillance inside a hotel where a rapist committed several crimes. Three Girls and a Baby from October 14th of 97. The detectives investigate the shooting death of Abby's lover. A man attempts to cover up his girlfriend's death by setting her corpse on fire. The Truth is Out There from October 28th of 97. An elderly paranoid witness is a detective's best hope of catching the killer. Tension escalates between the two brothers when Martinez and Menavoy investigate an alleged robbery of a taxicab driver. And that's everything from disc one. Moving on to disc two, um, the series premiered on November 4th of 97 and it's titled, It Takes a Village. A junkie implicates her two teenage sons in the shooting death of a grocer. Sipowitz and Russell search for a man who raped a nine-year-old girl. Next one is Dead Man, to to uh, Dead Man Talking from November 11th of 97. Simone and Sipwitz investigate an apparent home invasion robbery that left a woman and her infant son dead. Fancy's dying friend asks for a 15-year-old murder case to be reopened. Martinez, Menavoy, and Russell investigate the brutal beating of a rock and roll manager. And the last episode on disc two is Sheedy Dealings from November 18th of 97. Simone and Sipowitz search for clues when two young strippers are found strangled. A pair of men with the same lover suspect that they put out contracts on each other's lives. The housekeeper is accused of stealing her employer's jewelry. Let's see, disc three, first episode is Lost Israel Part One, and that premiered November 25th of 97. Sipowitz and Simone attempt to snare a man suspected of murdering his young son. The detectives investigate the death of a Hasidic woman. And this is part two of Lost Israel from, let's see, this premiered on December 9th of 97. A suicide threatens to derail the Egan case. Detectives question a doctor about a body found in the city dump. The next episode is Remembrance of Hump's Past from 
um, December 16th of 97. Sipowitz assists an old friend who, wears, who fears his daughter has fallen in with the wrong crowd. Metavoy and Martinez uncover a body, snatch her ring. Naomi reveals a secret. And let's see, this is the last episode on disc three. You're under a Rasta. <laughs> You're under a Rasta. All right, January 6th of 1998. The detectives search for clues when a drug dealer's wife is found murdered. A young prostitute's body is discovered lying in, by trash outside an apartment building. Diane tells Simone that she's pregnant. So let's go to disc four now. The first episode on disc four is a box of Wendy from January 13th, 1998. Simone is Sipwood's question, an odd farmer-like man whose sister was found murdered. Metavoy and Kirkendall investigate a shooting in a dispatcher's office. Russell searches for the truth when a young boy falls to his death. The next episode is from February 10th of 1998. It's called Twin Peaks. The detectives search for the murder suspect who preys on ATM users. Metavoy puzzles over a case involving a man who may or may not have an identical twin brother. Next episode is Weaver of Hate, February 17th of 1998. Tempers flare when father and white teenager murdered by African-American drug dealers uses racial um, epithets in a bus in a station house. A woman's body is found stuffed inside a refrigerator. Again, there's a lot of disturbing stuff on this show. Don't Kill the Messenger from February 24th of 1998 is the last episode on disc four. A schizophrenic man and a police officer become the prime suspects in the murder of a young nurse. Metavoy and Kirkendall investigate when a good Samaritan is killed while trying to retrieve a robbery victim's backpack. On to disc five. First episode premiered March 3rd of 1998 and it's called The One That Got Away. The detectives search for evidence when a police officer becomes a prime suspect in a murder investigation. Russell and Kirkendall search for a suspect who shot and wounded a student filmmaker. Next episode is Speak for Yourself, Bruce Clayton, and that came out on March 24th of 98. The detectives question suspects after two women are raped and shot on a rooftop. Metavoy, Russell, and Kirkendall investigate when a security guard is found murdered at a health clinic. In the last episode on disc number five, I don't want to die. You can see die, D-Y-E. From March 31st of 98, the detectives get a break in a case involving a police officer suspected of committing a murder. <clears throat> and this is the final disc, disc six. Pro trade before the lore, April 28th of 1998. The detectives encounter a group of right-wing militants suspected of killing one of their own. Sipowitz undergoes surgery for prostate cancer, and he, unknowingly, he keeps referring, referring to it as prostrate, <clears throat> but he's corrected by John. The next episode is from May 5th of 98, and is titled Hammer Time. Henry, Co uh, Henry Cofield becomes a suspect in a murder of one of Simone's elderly tenants. Sipowitz is released from the hospital. Seminal thinking from May 12th of 1998. The detectives search for the killer of a particularly disreputable used car salesman. Metavoy is sickened by the murder or the rape of a homeless woman. And the last episode of the season, Honeymoon at Viagra Falls from May 19th of 98. Simone and Russell make their final preparations to be married. The detectives investigate the murder of a witness and her young child. Man's daughter disappears in a park, a bust undercover a sports memorabilia scam, and Sipowitz learns the result of his blood test. Complete fifth season, all 22 episodes. The groundbreaking and award-winning cop series returns with more riveting drama and gritty New York City action in the 15th Squad. Season five finds Sipowitz and Simone dealing with the aftermath of Joey Salvo's homicide, setting up a rape sting, following a trail of stripper killer and investigating a murderous home invasion. Meanwhile, Metavoy, Martinez, and Russell undercover a body snatching ring, investigate the murder of rock and roll manager, and look for a man suspected of robbing taxis. You can see some of the photos that they have. 
That is season six. I'm sorry, that was season five. The six was the fifth, uh, the six discs. So this is season six. And we've got a new partner for Andy Sipowitz. And when Bobby Simone passes, he's got problems with his heart. And it's really sad because at the end, he finally gives up when Jimmy Smith leaves the show. And then we are introduced to Rick Schroeder. So let's open this up. Bobby Simone needed a heart to survive. He needed a transplant. And it was a suicide that Andy walked in on. And he was content to let the person die. And they were going to harvest his heart for Bobby. And he realized at the last minute that that was a bad idea. It was very, very unethical. So he ends up saving that person. But Bobby ends up passing. Really sad episodes. And we have the same thing now. We've got the six. One, two, oh, this came out of this little... Uh, Yeah, that just clips in. All right. Yeah, we've got the six discs. So we've got disc number one. And that's um, Rick Schroeder's first. I'll show you guys disc number two. We got Sipowitz. Oh, I'm sorry. That was disc two. So here's disc one. The complete sixth season with Andy Sipowitz on the cover. And I showed you disc two. And this is disc three. We've got Diane Russell. And let's see, disc four looks like it's got Greg Metaboy. And disc five, we've got Lieutenant Fancy. And let's see, who's on disc six? Looks like. Detective Martinez. And we got the same thing. We have the series episodes information that are written on the back of the um, the label. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can tell the background. It's the, it's the city at night with the Brooklyn Bridge. Very nice. So we've got disc one. The original air date was October 20th of 1998. A detective investigates the torture and murder of a hotel magnate's son. Russell and Kirkendall suspect that an attempted rape victim is hiding something, and Simone's health begins to deteriorate. Cops in a Bottle. That's October 27th of 98. Simone is admitted to the hospital when he experiences labored breathing and weakness. The squad comes to the aid of an alcoholic cop who found himself in the middle of a holdup. We can move on to the third episode, Num and Number, from November 10th of 1998. The detectives question a group of unsavory suspects after well-dressed men, after a well-dressed man is found dead in the park. And the squad tries to stay optimistic as Simone is told that he will require a heart transplant. Brothers Keeper, from November 17th of 1998, the detectives investigate a grisly murder in which an elderly woman's hands and feet were cut off. Simone's health continues to deteriorate. Moving on to disc two, we got Hearts and Souls from November 24th of 1998. Sipowitz helps his ex-wife deal with drunk driving violations. Simone's body rapidly succumbs to the infection in the wake of his heart transplant. We have Danny Boy from November, uh, December 1st of 98. Youthful detective Danny Sorensen joins the squad and during a multiple homicide investigation discovers that his new colleagues have yet to recover from Simone's death. You know, it's funny because, you know, it, it gets like a bad rap where nobody wants to be Sipowitz's partner because Detective Kelly gets railroaded, Bobby Simone dies, and wait till you find out what happens to Danny. So, Check Bouncer is from, and again, look how the spelling is. That's from December 8th of 1998. Sorensen and Sipwitz investigate the beating death of an elderly shop owner. Russell and Kirkendall encounter Dolores while investigating a homicide at a strip club. So, on to disc three. 
we have Raging Bulls from December 15th of 1998. The detectives search for a truth when a white off-duty police officer with a history of racism fires on an African-American undercover cop and Dolores is arrested for shoplifting. The next one is Grime Scene from January 5th of 99. Kirk and Dahl's son witnesses the murder of a convenience store clerk and Metavoy and Martinez investigate the death of a homeless man. January 12th of 1999 shows the episode Show and Tell. The detectives find themselves caught between the FBI and internal affairs when an off-duty officer is killed during a robbery. Metavoy falls victim to Sipowitz's mischievous prank. The next is A Big Bang Theory, and that's the last episode on Disc 3, and that premiered February 9th of 1999. A gigolo was suspected of killing one of the tenants who lives in his apartment building. Sorens's friend kidnaps a man who groped female passengers aboard a bus. On to disc four. We have What's Up Chuck from February 16th of 1999. John Irwin fears the worst when Dolores disappears. The detectives search for a body when a mentally ill man confesses to raping and murdering his girlfriend's daughter. Two brothers run their own investigation when his sibling is murdered. The next one is Dead Girl Walking from February 23rd of 1999. A shooter fires upon Fancy during the stakeout. Sipowitz fears that Dorman's demotion may be linked to the reopening of the Suarez case. Raphael's Inferno premiered March 2nd of 1999. Sorensen and Sipowitz investigate the murder of a nine-year-old girl whose body was discovered inside a locked basement. Metavoy Martinez assists an elderly man who believes that his young girlfriend who pressured into embezzling money from him, Sorens receives a visit from his sister. Can you imagine a toll that this job would take on people? And this is fiction. You know there are real detectives in New York City. Can you just imagine the toll that their job takes on them, the things that they have to deal with? On disc four, the last episode is I Have a Dream from April 6th of 1999. Sorensen and Sipwitz investigate when a, fo a fellow officer shoots a drug dealer. Russell and Kirkendall intercede in Got Gotelli's behalf when a disgruntled man repeatedly vandalizes his mobster neighbor's car. That's probably a bad idea. On to disc number five, Taint Misbehaving, on April 13th of 99. A slow-witted witness is a detective's best hope of extracting confession from a murder. Sorensen's girlfriend announces that she is pregnant. Don't meth with me. <laughs> I love the play on words. From April 20th of 1999, an elderly woman chokes to death after a robber leaves her bound and gagged in her apartment. A tip from Mike Roberts leads the detectives to a courier employee who may have masterminded an inside job. And Mike Roberts was that... Um, he was on the job, but he's not anymore. Um, he ended up being like a private eye who still thinks he's a detective and it's tough for him to learn that he's not. Next episode is Mr. Roberts from April 27th of 1999. Kirk and Dahl takes a risky undercover assignment during an investigation into Mike Roberts' apparent murder. And the next one, Judas Priest, well, that just happens to be one of my favorite all-time bands from April 4th of 1999, excuse me, May 4th of 1999, the detectives search for a way to prosecute Kulinen. Sipowitz asked Fancy to approach Dorman about his drinking problem. And disc six, he said the first episode is I'll Draw You a Map from May 11th of 1999. A little boy becomes the detective's best hope of solving a murder. Fearing embarrassment, Costas decides to keep Sipowitz from testifying against Cullinan. And the next episode is Vor Der This. Sorensen comes to the aid of a little boy who was victimized by a pedophile. Tragedy strikes when Dolores Mayo's father seeks revenge against Cullinan. And this is from May 18th of 99. And the series finale for the uh, season is called Safe Home from May 25th of 1999. The detectives worry about Sipowitz in the wake of Costas' death. Man claims that Coleman hired him to perform a murder. So those are the episodes. You can see the back. We got Sorensen and Sipowitz. 
Join an already impressive cast, including Kim Delaney, Jimmy Smits, James McDaniels, Gordon Clapp, and Adria Thompson. Rick Schroeder plays Danny Sorensen, a detective whose methods raise suspicion amongst his co-workers, including his new partner, Andy Sipowitz. But Sorensen's arrival is just one of the many explosive events in NYPD Blue Season 6, which will ensure that the 15th Precinct can never be the same again.